everybody, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, it's the Christmas season. It's uh, December, and I think it's 4th, 2021, if you're tuning in at some other time. And this is my dog, Gracie. She's eight months old now. She's such a sweetheart. And I got another box that I did open, but again, did not open the inside. I've been shopping like most people online, and I didn't realize this was actually one for a video. So this is by a company called, I believe you say Lady Access. It's all spelled one word, L-A-D-Y-A-C-C-E-S. So I would have thought that would be another S, but there isn't. So <clears throat> that's that. And they wanted me to open up one of their wires. And I believe they make it in 16, 19, and 21 strings. Not sure what this is. I think it's the uh, the 16 string one from when they contacted me. So you have a nice box that shows the product. Whoop, I'm sorry, Gracie. And uh, said good quality sound, solid wood. It's supposed to be solid mahogany. Uh, <laughs> That's interesting. I need to tell them they made a goof here. They put mental bridge instead of metal bridge. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be metal bridge. <laughs> Polished rounded corner. Yeah, they need to fix that. Mental bridge. I don't know, you know, although the liar is very good for you mentally, so I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, 16 strings. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Gracie, what is it? What is it? This, I have to keep that plastic away from you. What is this, Gracie? Okay, so as you can see, you need this tuning tool. And believe me, not all tuning tools are the same. Many of these harps that come from China seem to have the same gauge but then you'll get one that's totally different. So try to, I try to mark it with a, like a, a Sharpie or something, you know, which harp it belongs to. So you're not just digging through different ones. Okay, so you have this tuning tool. It's a tuning wrench, I suppose you can call it. They give you some picks. So if you wanted to play with picks, and as I'm taking them out, I'm going to put it in the handy zipper compartment that they give you in the bag because I don't want Gracie to get to them. She's already chewing the box. Don't do that. And then they give you an extra set of strings, which is very helpful because I have busted strings upon tuning. Don't eat that nasty. You have these things to play with. You have your toys. Anyway. They give you uh, numbers if you want to put them on the harp itself so you know where you're at. If you wanted to play music, actual notated music, I mean. And it uses um, some type of notation that's similar to the tongue drum. If you've ever watched any of my videos, you might see that some of the drums have already numbers on them and then they give you extra stickers because you can buy books and such that help you learn to play simple songs and some not so simple. Um, using the numbering method and I believe basically the premise is that the note the numbers with the dot on the bottom are the lowest tones and then the ones that don't have numbers would be your actual scale that you know the main scale of the drum usually C <clears throat> so one would be C and so forth and there are no sharps and flats in the key of C so you have to worry about tuning anything sharp or flat and then the numbers with the dots above it they are um, the higher notes. So basically the G, I think it's G, right? It, ah, G, C, D, E, F, G. So this, this um, harp, from what I'm looking at, would normally start, if it's in the key of C, this would be G, would be your lowest string, and then it would go up from there, <clears throat> G, A, B, and then C, and then the, the scale, so the octave, and then you'd be back again to the high C with the one, the one with the dot on top, going to actually an A. So it should end on a high A string. 
So there's your uh, parts of your scale. Okay, so I'm gonna put that back. Oh, look at this, she has destroyed this really expensive brace that I need for my arthritis. And then you have the booklet. Yeah, Lady Access. I thought it was Lady Aces, but I realized it's two Cs. And it says Elementary Course of Liar. And it shows the liar in full color <laughs> and how to tune it. And you can download a free app for your Android or iPhone or iPad. There are the different hearts, um, 16 string, 19 string. They say they even have 10. They also talk about a 21 string in this on the top of this box. So this I'm going to put also in the bag. Now I will need to take the tuning uh, tool out, the wrench out, after I shut the video because obviously this is not going to be in tune. And it just seems like it's going to be fine. There's no cuts or anything on here. So I'm pretty confident that it will be in good shape. Just, oh, she's such a love. All right, everybody. Ooh, I think it's going to be a color I like. I'm a sucker for blue. Look at my glasses, blue. My car is blue. Ooh, it's blue. Yay, I love the blue. Oh, that's pretty. You know what's funny? It's funny because I've seen these type of harps, you know, when I'm perusing Amazon or one of the other sites. And I, I didn't think that the colored wood would look as, look as nice as just plain old mahogany stain, like that kind of brownish or reddish stain, but it's actually really nice. So hold on, let me put all this away. Gracie can't get to it. Over there. All right. <clears throat> so you have a wooden bridge Okay, I don't know why in the paperwork on Amazon, maybe they sell guitars or something. It said bone nut saddle. I don't see anything that's bone nut. This is a bridge that's wood. But they do have, <laughs> they do have this metal piece. And I think this is what the mental part they were talking about. And they say, if you put the metal here, it will help to keep it from digging into the wood, the strings. And apparently, they have something like that here. That's what it says. I know some of the other harps I've reviewed or I've owned, sometimes I've had problems where maybe due to weather or whatnot, um, the strings slip and you have to kind of bang them in or turn them really hard when you're using the tuning peg and push. Turn and push is what I was told by a luthier instead of banging them, which one of the companies said you could bang them in, but I'm not sure about that. So let's hope we don't have to worry about that with this because they made specific note of saying how it helps string slippage with whatever they've done to the wire. Okay, so you have a little deer and you have the name right there, which is unusual name right on it. Um, I kind of like it when it, you know, personally, maybe if, it, if it's in script and it's a signature, I don't mind that. But personally, I would rather have that maybe on the back somewhere and just have the deer and the you know, the artwork just um, be, you know, visible. Um, this looks like it's actually burned in the wood. I'll show you up close. So it's a little flowery design here. And it's also um, burned in here, the flowers. The deer obviously is cut out. And then where it says Lady Access, it's also burns like wood burning. And then what's really nice is they actually have the numbers here coinciding with the notes. I really like that. Um, so I was correct. The G is the lowest tone and the A is the highest. And it's actually, yeah, it's fun too. <laughs> so, okay, I can hear potential already. Uh, let me show you real quick in case you haven't seen some of my other videos. And I believe in a couple of them, I do show how you actually tune it and how you really should tune up to the pitch. Not, you know, if you go past it, you should go back a little and then tune up. 
However, mostly that's true for guitar, ukulele, mandolin, any of those stringed instruments. But I've actually been told by Pete Diego, who makes harps, uh, uh, auto harps, which is kind of similar with this type of system of tuning, this peg tuning system. Um, he does say, if you go too high, um, you can gently press the string down and then it'll gradually go in pitch. Now, having said that, be really careful because one day I was doing that and I pressed it so hard that it, it just snapped. And that's like not fun with the metal strings. So that's just a little warning, uh, you know, be careful, cover your eyes and go easy. I generally speaking hate to tune things for the first time because I'm always convinced that something's going to pop <laughs> and surprise me. So let me um, shut this off and then I can share with you what it sounds like. But before I go, I will come up close so you can see it. It's pretty, it's really lightweight actually. Um, I like it's got kind of like these handles, you know. And um, also I like that it goes in the correct direction. Some of the harps have the lowest string here and it's backwards in my mind. So, or you have to flip it over. So this seems to work the way my brain works, which is linear, low to high. So see, and it just feels like it's going in the right direction. Although I think if you play harp harp, it's this way. So then it would be backwards. So harp people play it this way, like the low to the high. But I'm not left-handed, so I'm probably gonna have to play it this way. But a guitar, not to make this more complicated, but just so you can see both sides of the situation. As a guitar player, my brain does work this way. Well, when it's in tune, the, the guitar has the lower strings at the top and the high strings on the bottom. But with something like this, you can make it work any way you wish because I believe there aren't any right or wrong um, hard and fast rules because even this company and most of the other companies that sell these instruments are selling them to you to give you enjoyment and relaxation, peace of mind. Just the sound and the vibration of the strings are very helpful, especially during these last couple of years with COVID and you know the stress that has been inflicted into our lives due to something that truly came out of left field, right? So I that's why we have our little Gracie girl. When I lost Bailey, it was devastating. I had her for almost 19 years. But anyway, we got her on, on Bailey's birthday. So I will never forget our gotcha day. So May 28, 2021, Bailey would have been 19. And she passed March 5th. But she was an amazing dog. And I think her spirit lives in this little dog because she died in March, March 5th. And she was born March 31st. So that just makes me feel like there's somehow part of Bailey and my little Gracie. Anyway, here we go. All right, so as you can see, it's it's like a satin finish. It's very smooth. They did a really good job in painting this. I don't know how they did it. Spray, I bet you some kind of spray paint. Because you know how a car gets painted that way? And it's so smooth, no bubbles. That's what it looks like to me. But yet you can see what I couldn't see in the picture is that you can actually see the grain of the wood. You can see it a little better in the back here because it's plain. You know, wood has grain and that's the beauty of it. And no two pieces of wood like fingerprints are the same or snowflakes. It's a pretty deer. See that? and the metal strings. All right, so I will be right back. I'll show you the rest of my Christmas tree. We cut it down right in the woods in a Christmas tree farm. Well, my younger son cut it down. <laughs> I watched. <laughs> right, Gracie girl? Right, little girl? All right, here we go. Okay, everybody, I'm back. And I wanted to say a few things that I was thinking about as I was tuning this. The first is I would definitely start with the lowest strings because you would have more wiggle room if you screw up. Um, and what I mean is if you tighten it too much, it's less apt to pop than these strings, which are pretty thin, you know, the gauge of the strings. Um, also, when you're tuning it, really go in very small increments because a little bit goes a long way with these 
type of um, stringed instruments. And also another thing to bear in mind, um, if you're new to music, which anybody can really pick this up and enjoy it, so don't let that scare you, um, but just know that in between the, the B note and the C note, there's very little room. So when you, when you think you're going a whole step, because it looks like it, it jumps a letter name, it's actually a half a step. So there's a whole step between like G and A. So you have a little more that you might need to turn. But between B and C, it's half that. And the same between E and F. So you will see that a few times and just bear that in mind. That's why it maybe went so sharp so quickly or flat. So those are the things I wanted to tell you. And um, also, this is really good advice, but sometimes I even forget and it happens. I pop a string. Sometimes you think that you're tuning one string and you keep turning the thing and you keep plucking at it and nothing seems to happen until you've popped a string. So it may be you're daydreaming after doing half of them or whatever, however it happens, it's happened to me. So, you know, just be really careful. I use one of these kind of tuners. I just find it easier than fiddling with holding my phone or my iPad. Um, they're pretty accurate. They're vibration tuners and they're very inexpensive. Um, they come with a lot of ukuleles nowadays. So I happen to have one or a couple <laughs> actually. And it's, they're great to have for many instruments. So um, this is going again, not to be in perfect tune because every second that we're sp I'm speaking to you, it's going out of tune just because there are new strings. But I, I did it once, I played it, it was out of tune, I did it again. So that's only twice. And they seem to go up to the pitch very nicely. So that's actually a good sign. All right, so let's see what we have. I can hear some flat notes already, but maybe it's a good time for me to show you how I check it. So I just put the tuner so I could see it clamped on one of the pegs Turn it on, of course. Put it on chromatic, because if it's on a different instrument and some of these tuners are just for guitar or ukulele or violin, that's when you're going to also have that problem where you're like, why isn't it changing? It won't change because it's waiting for a different pitch, which doesn't exist. So you don't have different notes like a C on a guitar, but you have it on a, a ukulele, but you might not have it on a guitar. So just put it on chromatic and it should do the trick. So. I'm gonna just tune them all a little bit. Maybe I'll speed up the video so it doesn't bore you. See, you're ready that little bit. It's, it's too sharp. And I'm gonna tune them a little sharp because they keep going flat so quickly just for the sake of demonstration. You will notice that the unwound strings will stay in tune a little better at first. So like when you're first getting the instrument in tune. So your unwound strings start from the A4. The numbers are not the same numbers as the stickers. These numbers indicate where it would be in the, in the scale. And like on a piano, I believe the C3 is the middle C. Or is it C4? I think it's C4. So this starts a little bit under the middle uh, note of a piano. Okay, I believe that's the middle of a piano, C4. So, and then it goes all the ways to A5, so quite a bit higher. Okay, so another thing that I thought of to tell you, and I might do this, is on a, on a uh, lyre like this that starts on G, um, your brain might think something is flat because you're thinking of uh, the major scale and a major scale starting on G would have an F sharp 
and in this scale, because it, it starts on G, but it's really the, it's a C major scale, it won't be sharped. So this is what I mean. So in the G major scale, there's one sharp, F sharp. So when you get to F here, it may not sound correct because your brain is thinking Do, Re, Mi, which is the major scale. So listen, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, and it's like F, for me, I want to go up that half step, G, A, B, C. Now watch when you, but if you start from C and forget about these notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, that sounds correct. There's your C major scale. So that's just a little something in case you're wondering why it might sound a little funky. It's in a mode, I believe, because it actually it's actually the major scale of C, but starting on the fifth degree. So I believe that is, um, I always get my modes mixed up. Is it Mixolydian? Anyway, you could look up modes, but it's not necessary to know. Just know that you can play this and it's going to sound pretty. What I did want to tell you is if, and this is what I might do, if you want, you could tune the F notes and there are only two of them, one half a step higher. And hopefully you won't pop the higher F. By doing that, you would put this in the key of G and when it's in the key of G with that F sharp, you can actually play Native American flutes that are in E minor because that is the equivalent minor scale to the major G is E minor. So that's kind of cool and I might want to try that. So without further ado, let me just demonstrate uh, how this harp sounds, okay? Or lyre, I should say. I've been told it's not a harp. It feels like a harp because you can do this <laughs> and this, but it's a lyre. So here we go. You could play it like this. And you can feel the vibrations.
<sighs> I love when that finally starts to come together and you just feel like you can get lost. My right hand is much more at ease picking strings because of the guitar and ukulele playing where this hand is used to fretting strings. Um, even on the dulcimer, you fret them. So this is my weaker hand uh, as would be for most people who are not drummers. My son's a drummer and he can have his feet and his hands going, my younger son doing everything. So drummers are the exception, <laughs> but usually people have a dominant hand. So this is actually a good way to practice like the drum, you know, using that hand that's not as strong. And maybe you can make some chords to make it easier. That's a little hard to show you, like something like this. And then my thumb does it what it wants. <laughs> I actually have to be honest, I really, um, I like the sound of this one. And it's going to get better. The more it stays in tune, that'll go together, it'll meld. The wood, you know, changes over time and wooden instruments, generally speaking, get better with age. I love that, it just feels good. Do that and feel it. They have therapy harps where they actually have it, you put it on the person who doesn't feel well. And so self-therapy, right? Music is definitely my self-therapy. <laughs> Thank you for watching.